Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're going to continue our series on the Dell PowerEdge R620 server. In this video, we're going to specifically focus on memory. Let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R620 server. Do us a favor, find anything in this video useful, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, so uh, let's get rolling. This video is going to be focused on memory. Uh, this uh, machine is part of the 12th generation, which means it takes DDR3 memory. There are 24 DIMM slots inside. There's a number of different speeds that you can use. You can go as low as 1066, 1333 or 1600. Technically you can also put in 1866 but I'll just let you know it's going to clock back down to 1600 which is the true fastest speed so just know that going in that um, 1600 is the best that you're going to get out of the 620 okay. As far as the dim sizes you can go as low as a 4 gig, an 8 gig, a 16 gig, a 32 gig or all the way up to a 64 gig. There is a key though with the 64 gig you can only use that with one type of memory and that brings us to what type of RAM does the R620 accept? Well, there's two types of RAM. There's ECC registered, also known as an RDIM, and there's load reduced, known as an LRDIM. With ECC registered, the most that you can get is 512 gigabytes using 1632 gigs at 1600 speed. Whereas with load reduced, you can get three times the scalability with 1.5 terabytes using 2464 gigs at 1600 speed. And people ask, hey, on the Dell spec sheet, it only shows that you can put in um, 32 gigabyte DIMMs. And yeah, that is true. Um, at some point um, when uh, Dell, and make sure this is actually a good thing to bring up, at some point Dell did a BIOS update. So make sure that you have an up-to-date BIOS, which we'll show you how to do in a, a couple of videos from now. But if you have an up-to-date BIOS and you have a V2 proc, you can use 64 gig LR DIMMs uh, with the 620. So uh, we've done it a number of times. Uh, we sell the kits all the time to different people that want to max out their 620. Um, so yes, you can use that. Just wanted to note that for anyone that was concerned because they're looking at the Dell spec sheet and it says something different, okay? Um, so all right, so now that uh, we know a little bit about the, uh, the different DIMMs, uh, I want to show you uh, how to physically install them and I want to show you something that you might have been wondering when I said you can only put in 16 32 gigs for our DIMMs and I said you can put in 24 uh, 64 gigs for the LR DIMMs. You might be wondering, well, why can't I put in 24 R DIMMs? We'll show you that and that's what's known as the rank rule. But before we hop in, I'm going to grab my ESD gloves and be right back. All right, now we've got our ESD gloves on. We are safe to work inside our R620. So really all we're going to need for this upgrade is a tray of memory. So we've got a bunch of 64 gigs here, and we're going to put in 24 of them. So first things first, make sure your latch is set to unlock. Lift the top up pretty much like any 620 or any really Dell server you've been in before. All right, so um, you will notice uh, there are two CPUs. CPU 1 controls the 12 DIMM slots over here, and CPU 2 controls the 12 DIMM slots over here. Uh, this is really important because um, you need to understand the channels, um, and it's actually labeled right here on the air baffle itself. It might be hard to see on camera, um, and we're going to physically show you uh, where the channels are and how to properly install everything, but they are labeled right here, and you will need to remove the air baffle in order to get to uh, the DIMM slots themselves. So there's two uh, blue marks right here, grab right there, and on the front, you're just going to lift straight up. Very easy to actually remove the air baffle. Um, so when you get in here, you will notice that there are four memory channels per CPU, and there are three DIMMs per memory channel. And this is all color-coded to let you know that. So white is the start of your uh, memory channel, black is the second slot in the channel, and green is the third slot in the channel. So right there is your first memory channel, okay? So if you were installing DIMMs, and let's just say you weren't maxing them out, you would want to use the white DIMM slots. So right here is A1, and then you'd put your next DIMM in A2, and then your next DIMM in A3, and then your next DIMM in A4. Now if you had two CPUs, you would then actually come over here, continuing with the white DIMM slots, and do B1, B2, B3, B4, okay? So you would use the eight white DIMM slots to start, okay? Well, then you go, okay, well, where do I go next? Well, then you go to the black DIMM slot. So right here, A5, A6, A7, A8, and then come back over here, B5, B6, B7, B8. And then you'd go through and fill out all the green slots. So A9, A10, A11, A12, 
B9, B10, B11, B12. Okay, so those are all the different slots. Now let's talk about the rank rule because the rank rule is really important. Uh, talking about the memory channels and the DIMMs per channel, and really what's key is the three DIMMs per channel because what the rank rule states, the rank rule says you cannot have more than eight ranks per memory channel. And what's important about that is every 32 gig, whether it's ECC registered or load reduced, are quad rank. So that means there's four ranks for the uh, for the DIM. All right. So what that means, if we can just do some quick math, if we were to install three 32 gigs, that's 12 ranks. Well, we've broken the rank rule. We've gone over eight. Well, that's why you cannot install uh, ECC registered in the third DIM slot is because you have 12 ranks. Now, load reduced, on the other hand, which is also quad rank is a special technology where the DIMMs actually appear as dual rank so you can install them and not break the rank rule technically um, by doing LR DIMMs which is why you have triple the scalability with LR DIMMs and you can use 24 slots as opposed to 16 because with ECC registered all you can use with and let me be clear about this with the 32 gig quad rank EC registers you can only put two DIMMs per slot which would be the or two two DIMMs per channel which would be the white and the black okay now all the like the four gigs and the eight gigs and the 16 gigs for ECC registered um, are realistically uh, you know one R by four or two R by four depending on which you're using there is a kind of a small niche of um, uh, 16 gig uh, 1066 modules, which are 4R by 4, which would then run back into that. You can only put 16 per uh, per server, and you can't fill them all the way up. But your normal dual rank 16 gigs, yes, you can put 24 in. All right, so that was my long-winded way of explaining the rank rule, but I thought it was some important information in there for everybody, especially if you're not maxing it out, how to install the DIMMs. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to max this out, but we're still going to do it as if we weren't maxing it out and doing it uh, properly with uh, the channels. So if uh, you're at home and you're only putting an 8 or 16, we'll show you exactly how to do it. Uh, before we do, I want to point out a couple things. So one, uh, on the module itself, there is a notch in the middle. Uh, this notch is known as a key. This key is very important because this key, as you can tell, is not perfectly in the center. So you have to make sure you line your memory module up perfectly. Otherwise, you can potentially damage the dim slot or damage the lead itself. Neither of those are problems that you want to run into. So just make sure you line everything up properly. The other thing I like to say is I like to open all my tabs in advance. Um, this way, when I'm going to install memory, uh, I don't have any issues um, and nothing, you know, pushing back against me installing the module. Just make it nice and easy. Um, all right. So first things first, we're going to go to A1, which we had pointed out here earlier, the white dim slot. So we just need to line this up, put it in. So you'll notice I've put the module in. However, I have not fully inserted the module, and this is a common issue where someone uh, thinks that the module's uh, fully in, but you need to make sure you hear two clicks. Those two clicks, and you'll see the tabs have moved in. What they do is they grab the side of the module, which pulls it down so the leads are fully inserted and you have a proper connection. Uh, it's one of the most common problems that we see users run into, and it's normally it's like just out a little bit, something like that, and just because it's out a little bit, it's not fully inserted. So uh, that is a very common issue. If you're at home and you think you have a bad dim, the first thing I recommend is to rotate your dims around. If it follows this, uh, the slot, then yeah, you have a bad dim. Uh, if it doesn't, then it's honestly probably just a seating error. Uh, very, very common. Okay. So now note when you come over here, it flip flops as far as the key. So we're going to come out here to A3 and we did A1 and A2. All right. And now we're going to do A4. All right. So if you have only one CPU, which I recommend with the machine like this, you should definitely have two CPUs. But if you only have one CPU, then you'd actually come back to uh, A5 and you'd start on the black slots. Okay, if you have two CPUs, you come out to uh, B1 and you're going to continue on with the white slots. Okay, so just make sure you have again lined up properly. Click, click, and you keep on rolling. So now we're going to do B2. B3, and it does flip-flop over here, and B4. Okay, so now you notice, and I'm stressing the point again, 
we have installed them in all the white dim slots okay and people ask why do you do that and again it's about performance you don't want to overload a few memory channels and have them doing all the other work or doing all the work and the other channels just aren't doing anything right so you want to have a nice even distribution a nice balance across all your memory channels so you have maximum performance okay it's all about getting the best performance okay so now we're, we're going to show you so this is the best way for eight dim slots so now we're going to show you the best way for 16 dim slots you're going to do all the black dims so we'll go ahead and we'll knock this out and we'll fast forward through it but you're going to do all the black dims all right so this is the ideal configuration for 16 uh, memory modules inside um, and again it doesn't really matter if you're doing 16 4 gigs 16 8 gigs 16 32 gigs 16 uh, 64 gigs like we have here this would still be the best way to do it across the board uh, where you you're uh, again having a nice even distribution on all the memory channels now we're gonna go ahead and max this out and we're gonna load up all of the green uh, dim slots as well and we'll be right back all right, so we have fully maxed it out. We have 1.5 terabytes of RAM in our R620. Uh, this is going to be an awesome configuration for this machine. Um, one of the things I'd like to note at the end, make sure all of your tabs are fully pushed in. Uh, when I talk about uh, a module not being fully seated, again, I'll do it with the green one since that's a little bit brighter. You have a, mod, uh, a, a tab that's out just a little bit like that that dim is not fully seated and you can barely even tell right like even if we scroll in right now and zoom in you can barely even tell that little bit right there and that's why it's such a common issue so again just making sure all of your tabs are fully in and we're, we're good we, we we did this upgrade and again i always like to tell people as well if you're um trying to upgrade let's just say your office server and you're not you know a true technician and you're wondering hey can i can i do this yeah you can do it uh, this is a very easy upgrade as a whole uh, you can watch a video like this on YouTube and it'll help you know walk you through all the steps so okay now we're gonna drop our uh, air baffle back on so you just want to line this up properly and get it nice and flush okay so this is nice and flush and it's even right here keeping a good airflow all right um, and one other thing I'd like to say if you guys are using any R620s in your data center uh, we'd love the opportunity to custom build one for you uh, please email us at sales at cloudninjas.com that's sales at cloudninjas.com and hey if you made it this far click that like smash that subscribe thanks for stopping by guys <laughs>